hey guys welcome back to my channel so today i'm gonna be showing you guys how i did this small fitting braids um so i've been seeing this online i think i saw justin sky wearing them on my feed and i saw a couple of people wearing these like really small fitting so i wanted to try it on myself because i'm in between styles right now so i'm planning on doing knotless braids on myself next but i needed something quick and temporary so i decided why not try this particular style out and that is exactly what i'm doing so it's quite hard to do like all back feeding like straight backs um it looks very simple but it's actually one of the most difficult hairstyles to do because of its simplicity and the neatness so when you're doing this i recommend you start off your braids with your natural hair and then you proceed to add on the braiding hair for reinforcement um, for this particular style of braids i added very very tiny strands of um, braiding hair um, as, I, as I went along with the cornrows you don't have to necessarily do that uh, depending on you know how long you want your hair to last depending on how full your hair is just depending on a lot of other factors um, my hair tends to last longer when I have braiding hair with my cornrows so that's why I wanted to just add a little bit just to give it a little bit more like sturdiness so that way even when I forget to wear my bonnet my hair still kind of holds up just a little bit um, so that's why I tend to do that, but you can do whatever, you know, comes natural to you as long as you are consistent with your parting. I think you can still achieve the same result. So the most difficult part for this um, style for me was the parting because you know it's all about the neatness of the hair. So when I part this hair, the technique I like to use was my okay. So what I do is when I take my rat tail comb to cut the or part the initial parting in the front, I then follow through using my hands to kind of feel the middle section and the back section when I'm parting along because I can't see my hand um, almost becomes my eyes so that way I just kind of follow the line if the line feels a bit crooked or, or you know messed up I go back again with the comb and kind of reinforce that part to make sure that it looks really nice and it looks really realistic or as best to straight as I can get it to look
but try to take your time um the more the straighter you can get your the front half to be the better you are um honestly just try as much as you can to get the the fr front half of your hair to, to be straight when you part it and you should be good really because typically when you're parting the back and the middle section the sides of the braids kind of cover the lines so it really doesn't matter too much but just try your best to get it as straight as you can possibly get it and uh, don't add too much braiding here because you you want this to still look small so adding very 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 micro pieces of braiding here as you go along uh, in a consistent manner would help uh, and it just also depends when you get to some sections of your hair that are a little bit fuller than others then you can reduce the amount of braiding hair you're adding consistently maybe like add like every like other like plaits you can add some hair as opposed to adding you know hair with every plait if that makes sense um and then areas of your hair that is thinner you can add a little bit more um feeding braids consistently so that way the hair gets thicker if that makes sense so there is no rule book um everybody's hair is different so you kind of have to kind of fill your hair out and get to know your hair and figure out what consistency or repetitive motion would work best for your hair Also, try as much as you can to leave your edges out because you don't want to braid your edges with this. The part of the beauty of this hairstyle is being able to lay your edges as well because you don't want to braid everything all the way back and then your face is just looking strong. Like, <laughs> what's up? <laughs> so just leave your edges out, you know, so that way they're also protected and you can get like cute baby hairs with them. And just take your time. Make sure you have a mirror. You need a mirror when you're doing this and utilize your bathroom mirror as well so that way you can see the back section and make sure that everything looks really really good overall um and yeah good luck <laughs> So what I did to manage this process for me was I cut my hair in, into half, like two sections. So the first section is what you see me doing right now. So I'm just going to braid that all the way back first. And then when I'm done with the first half of my hair, I move on to the opposite end to begin the second half of my hair. Um, the reason I do this is just, just to kind of manage um, the sizing throughout and plus I remember I mentioned earlier that the front part of your head is a bit wider than the back part of your hair so it tends to bring in a little bit of complications when you get to um, the nape of your hair so separating your hair into two sections will allow you to manage the nape area to make sure that everything is nicely proportioned and even throughout so that's why it's important to kind of section your hair into two so you could try that or if you don't really need to do that and you think you've got it then you can do that 
And another really cool technique to manage the nape section is just to cut like an inch from your nape. Um, just cut like an inch section of your nape, maybe from the the ends of your ear to the opposite ends of your ear um, just cut like an inch worth of sections there and then just do individual single braids so that way you kind of cut off um, that really tiny nape area and save it for like individual braids and then it kind of widens your your new nape area for where your cornrows would be braided backwards too if that makes sense so that really extreme nape you want to cut like maybe like an a, an inch off and just do like individual braids and then when you're cornrowing backwards um you have like a wider nape section to kind of manage and it makes it a bit easier so you don't have to fit all 24 cornrows into that tiny nape area and it could cause a lot of discomfort so that is another technique if i was doing this style on a client i would do that that is the preferred method i would use but because i was just tired and i couldn't be bothered i was just trying to finesse okay and that's what i'm doing because i didn't really intend on wearing this hairstyle for more than a week so that's why i just kind of did what i needed to do to get the quick and easy style and then move on So now that I'm done with the first half, I have moved to the second half of my hair. Um, in the first half of my hair, I did 12 braids going backwards. In the second half, I'm also going to do maybe 12, 13, or 14 braids going backwards. It just depends. Um, and I noticed in my midsection, my part started to get bigger because I got lazier. So excuse that. But overall, you're just going to repeat the same process um, in the other section Then you know, like you did in the first section and make sure you still continue to use really really tiny strands of feeding hair so that way your hair doesn't get too big because this is a size small if you were doing a medium you would obviously increase the size of your feeding braids so that way it can be a little bit bigger so because the more hair you use the bigger your cornrows become right so that's how you kind of manage the size and the consistency of that hair that you're adding onto your head So now that we are all done, um, what I'm going to be doing to make this hairstyle a little bit different and more fun is I'm going to be adding beads to it and I'm going to keep them short because I feel like sometimes we get to, we tend to forget the beauty of short hair and we always want to go for braids that are like super long when in reality long braids are just really unnecessary unnecessary and inconvenient <laughs> so i'm just going to be keeping it short and cute and i'm going to be feeding these clear beads into my cornrow ends um for each cornrows or uh, braids i'm going to be installing 10 clear beads into them because the beads are so small i had to bend the tail ends of my braids and just use the tail ends that is bended to feed the corn i mean the beads into it just to have 
nicely laid 10 beads and then when I'm done I tie I tie the ends of my braids into a knot so that way the beads can stay put and does not fall down so I'm tying it into a knot after installing the the beads and then I take a pair of scissors uh, make sure that knot is very nice and secure okay and then I'm gonna take a pair of scissors and slightly cut the ends of the knot that I just tied make sure you don't cut too close so the knot doesn't unravel and then we're gonna be burning the tip when you burn the tip it gives it a very very pretty look um, I love the way this looks so that way you can avoid that ugly look that a rubber band elastic band would give you so I just burn the tip and just looks it just gives your your overall braids just a different vibe it looks really really cute and I absolutely love it this is a technique that I noticed is being done a lot in Nigeria or Africa um, so I wanted to incorporate a little bit of that into my braids and I thought it was my cute and you should try that this is the second time I'm doing this technique um, I've done this cornrows before in a bigger size and I love them and I did the same beads as well um, and every time it comes out so cute and so like such a vibe don't forget to lay down your edges and you should be good to go you guys if you enjoy this tutorial make sure you give this video a thumbs up like comment and share and I will catch you guys in my next video have a merry day and God bless